Making these kinds of short-term investments is like skydiving while being chased by a bear. Not for the faint of heart, but for those investors that can take the stress, the outsized returns can be unbelievable. Like in a video last year, when one trade alone made a 127% return in just two months. I'm going to show you five short-term investments to make right now. I'll reveal a stock to buy for each investment, plus an option strategy to leverage your returns and limit risk. Stick around and I'll show you how to find these types of trades, and more importantly, how to use the short-term investing with your long-term portfolio. First up here, the US dollar is approaching a multi-year high against other currencies. In fact, it has really only been this high twice in the last 40 years. The idea that interest rates here in the United States are going to be higher for longer, and a still strong economy attracts foreign money into the dollar, boosting its value against other currencies. But it won't last. Trillion dollar government deficits and a loss of confidence in the US by other central bankers have already driven gold to an all time high as a way to diversify away from the dollar. The catalyst here could be inflation reports like the CPI or just a shifting stance by the Fed that rates will come down this year and could spark a drop in the dollar. A direct way to invest in this would be the Invesco US Dollar Bear Fund, ticker UDN, which uses futures to get that inverse exposure to the value of the dollar, rising when the dollar falls. A return of the dollar to where it was just at the end of last year, just above 100 on the ICE dollar index, could take the UDN close to $19 per share for a quick 7% return. Now that 7% potential return might be about as tempting as an all-you-can-eat buffet with only liver and anchovies, so I want to show you an option strategy that can not only boost your returns, but also limit your downside risk. That's really why I like using these option strategies so much for these kinds of short-term investments, to limit that downside on each and potentially book unlimited upside returns. So for a higher return here, you might consider a call spread on the UDN. This is where you buy one call option and sell another to offset some of the price. It's a great way to take that bullish view on a stock, but at a lower cost. For the UDN, I can go in here to the options and let's use the September options to give us some time to see the dollar fall. Here I can buy the $18 strike price, so I would pay 35 cents a share for that for the right to buy UDN at $18 a share through September expiration, and at the same time, I'm going to sell the $19 strike price for about 10 cents each. So my net cost here is only 25 cents a share for this spread. And if the fund rises to $19 a share by that expiration date in September, this strategy would be worth a dollar each for four times my money in just five months. Now, if we look at the price chart on UDN over the last year, it struggled to stay above that $19 a share. So while I do think the dollar falls and the fund goes up over that over the next few months, wouldn't necessarily want to risk it finishing above that $19 through that option expiration. So I would probably close this out, this call spread out, if it got close to maybe 50 cents net. So if I could sell the $18 calls I bought and buy back the $19 calls for a net 50 cents each, then I'd double my money in just a few months and be out of the trade. And this is actually almost the same short-term strategy we used in October of last year that resulted in a 127% return in two months. I recommended a call spread on the UDN with an $18 and $19 strike prices for a total cost of $0.44 cents each. By the time those options expired in December, the UDN was above that $19, so we made a dollar per share on that $0.44 cents each investment. we still got four more short-term strategies left, but in my new Ultimate Options course, I'll show you 29 option strategies you can use to leverage returns higher, generate dividends from those non-dividend paying tech stocks, and even limit your risk. Whether you've never invested in options or already know the basics, this course is going to teach you everything you need to know about using options to increase returns, lower your risk of a crash, and even generate income every month. Over three hours of video, I start you with the basics, then walk you through each option strategy, when to use it, and how to set it up, including a real-world example with shares of Tesla. The course also comes with a one-of-a-kind strategy finder to help you find the right option strategy and an options calculator to show you exactly what to expect. And right now, I'm launching the course at a 38% discount. Save $150 off. You'll get all the basics to get you started, that strategy finder to make sure you're using the best strategy, the options calculator to show you exactly how much you can make, walkthroughs on all 29 strategies, and a 14-day money-back guarantee. That $150 launch discount, though, is only available with the coupon code in the link I'll leave in the description below, so look for that link or just scan the QR code here. Related to that dollar story, interest rates have surged with the 10-year treasury now above 4.6%, and in fact, a longer-term chart shows rates near 20-year highs. And that's because the Fed raised rates at the fastest pace in 40 years to slow inflation, and persistently high prices have now pushed back rate cuts to later this year. 
The CME FedWatch rate tool shows market expectations for rate cuts for each of the Fed meetings. And you can see here for the July meeting, just 46% chance of a rate cut expected, where just a month ago, the odds were nearly certain at 78% or better. But just like the dollar, interest rates cannot stay this high for long. That high cost of borrowing will choke off the economy, raising debt expense for companies and killing the housing market. It was right around this level of rates that caused the stock market to pull back last October and brought calls for the Fed to cut. And when that happens, the iShares 20-year Treasury Bond ETF, ticker TLT, will jump. A move back to 4% on the Treasury could send the TLT back up to $99 each for a 12% return on top of the 3.6% dividend you collect. And again, I realize that 12% return isn't so persuasive for short-term investors, even if it is over just a few months. And the $88 stock price might be a stretch for others. So our option trade here, I wanna use the synthetic long strategy. The synthetic long is a great way to get the exact same exposure to a stock, except for less cost per share, and get the leverage returns with it. You set it up by buying one call option and selling a put option at the same strike price. And watch this because it really shows the power of options. If I go into the July options for the TLT, you can see here I can buy the shares for $88 each and maybe get that 12% return back up to $99 a share. Or if we scroll down, I can buy the $89 strike call option for $2.90 each and at the same time sell an $89 strike put option for $2.78 each. That's offsetting the money I paid for the call. In fact, that lowers my cost to just 12 cents per share for that upside exposure to the TLT. So you decide, $88 a share or 12 cents a share. And the payoff chart here shows that power of this option strategy. For that 12 cents per share or $12 for each contract, because remember, options contracts are in 100 share blocks. You get that same exposure to the TLT as if you had paid that $88 per share. You make money as the stock price rises and lose if it falls. At that same $99 per share target, you would make $988 for every $12 invested in the synthetic long strategy. Of course, before I get a million comments about how I ignored the downside, remember that that leverage can work to the downside as well. So if the TLT does fall further, then you could lose just as much. That's why for these short-term strategies, it is so important to have a sound reasoning or rationale for why that trend is gonna reverse and a catalyst to start it. And of course, also to know how to put these short-term strategies together into a portfolio, which is something I'm gonna show you how to do later in the video. Besides that loss of confidence in the US government, fears of geopolitical risks in Asia and the Middle East have driven gold to an all-time high, surging 15% this year alone. Now, inflation is not going down as fast as anyone would like, and central banks will continue to buy gold to diversify away from the dollar. All this will support that price, but that high price is also acting against other factors in gold. At the all-time high, jewelry buying and industrial users are all looking for alternatives and even investors are looking to cash in some of their profits. The price is sparking a mining boom for gold producers and that's going to weigh on the price as well as that new supply comes online. So for all this, the price of gold is likely range-bound after that big move higher. You can see here in the longer term chart, back 20 years, it's common for gold to make these big moves higher or lower but then to stay in that range as those fundamentals catch up. And with these range-bound ideas, options are really your only way to play it. If you think the price of gold and the spider gold shares, ticker GLD, is likely to stay close to where it is, buying the fund wouldn't help, nor would shorting it. But we can use one of my favorite option strategies for making money when you think a stock is gonna stay in this range, an iron condor. By selling and buying puts and calls, you collect a net premium and make money as long as the stock stays within a range of prices. So here, you are actually gonna be collecting money on this. And the best part is, even if the price does break out beyond your range, your losses are limited. And here, I know the setup looks complicated, so I'm gonna walk you through our example, but here, you're selling one put and buying another, and at the same time, selling a call option and buying another. So let's go to the options expiring in June for those gold shares with the current price around $219 each. And remember, we think it won't fall or rise much from here by June. You can play around with which strike prices you use, but we're gonna use the 210 and the 205 put options. So paying $1.22 a share to buy the 205 puts and then collecting $2.24 a share selling those $210 strike puts. That means we collect $1.02 per share on that side. Then for the call options, we'll use the 230 and 235 strike call options, paying $2.31 per share for the 235 options, and then collecting $3.20 per share, selling those $230 strike options for a net of $0.89 cents per share. 
So if you add up these two, we're actually collecting $1.91 per share, actually collecting that money up front. And you can see with this strategy, we make money on this if the price of GLD shares stay between 208 and 232 per share by option expiration in June. Now that's just two months away and gold would have to fall by 5% or rise by 6% for the investment to start losing money. But if the price of gold and gold shares stay within that range, we keep some or all of that money we collected on the options, as much as $190 per 100 shares. And you can do this for as many shares as you like. But the great thing about this iron condor is that even if something crazy happens and the price of gold plunges or jumps, your losses here are limited. Okay, I can already see some eyes glazing over out there, and I know these short-term option strategies can be confusing. Do not feel like you have to be an expert all at once in these folks. Watch through the strategies a couple of times, think through a couple of examples if you need to, because once you get these, it'll be like a switch flips and it'll all fall into place. Here, the classic short-term trade for investors is that undervalued stock, and it doesn't get much more undervalued than Alibaba Group, ticker BABA. At $70 a share, Alibaba trades for just eight times this year's expected earnings and for a price to revenue of just 1.4 times. That is a 27% discount to its own PE ratio just last year and an 82% discount to the valuation investors are paying right now for shares of Amazon at 43 times this year's expected earnings. And yes, growth has slowed to around 7% a year on revenue and about 13% on earnings. And investors are always nervous that the Chinese government is going to step in on these. But for a short-term investment where you can get in on that discount, get the return on a turnaround, and then get out, there are few better. The company reports its earnings May 16th, which could be the catalyst. Alibaba has been aggressively pricing its cloud services, which could help beat on that top line revenue growth, even if it does detract a little bit from earnings. The company also has a lot of levers for growth. For example, its open source AI model, the Quinn 72B, has produced performance comparable to Alphabet and Anthropics models, and its cloud business could get a boost from increased data center usage from AI. The shares have made several runs up to $78 this year and have been as high as $102 over the last year. And for the options trade here, I would go simple and just buy a call option expiring May 17th, the day after earnings are set to release. We can buy the $70 strike option for $3.44 a share, giving us the right to buy the stock at $70 at any time up to that expiration. Now that puts our cost basis at $73.44, just 4% over the current price, but Instead of having to pay $70 a share now, we get that option and any losses are limited to that $3.44 a share. If Alibaba reports a strong quarter and the shares pop even to that $78 each they've been at this year, that call option will be worth at least $8 a share for 132% upside in just one month. Now that 100% plus return isn't without risk though. Alibaba needs to be above $73.44 or we lose some of that investment and could lose it all if the price falls under $70 each, but I think the upside here is well worth that risk. If the stock jumps between now and earnings, I might consider selling the option if we can get around $5 each for a quick 50% return and without the earnings risk. We still got another short-term strategy, one for the crazy up and down market of oil prices, but I wanna show you how to find these kinds of investments as well as how to use them in a long-term portfolio. Finding those short-term investments can be on that deep analysis in a stock, finding those undervalued names that you think are ripe for a turnaround, but I also like to start with these larger macro trends. You start with that big picture like interest rates or the dollar and then find stocks that are going to be affected when that turn comes around. More importantly though is for that turnaround to start, you need a catalyst. The fact that a stock is undervalued or interest rates are higher or the dollar expensive is just not enough to do it. Newton's first law is surprisingly fitting to the stock markets. A trend remains in motion until another force acts against it. So after you've found that undervalued stock or the trend that's gone too far for fundamentals, you need to find when that might have a catalyst like earnings call or, or an inflation report or some other news comes along to stop that momentum. That's when you're going to make that investment. But just as important, Nation, you're not throwing all your chips into just short-term investments. I see too many investors with their whole portfolio in short-term jumping in and out of stock ideas like a meth head trying to finish his taxes on April 15th. Instead, use these short-term ideas as a part of your overall strategy with no more than 20 or 30% of your portfolio with three to five ideas at a time along with the rest in those longer term forever stocks. Next up here, oil has jumped lately to a near one year high as an escalation between Iran and Israel threatens oil supply. That combined with still solid economic growth in the US has supported the price, but there is much more to push oil lower over the rest of the year. 
Of course, any ease in those geopolitical tensions would see oil crash, but we're also seeing some record supply increases in the US, and, and higher interest rates could slow the economy to need less energy. The US is now pumping out 13 million barrels of oil every day, more than any other country ever. And all this is as oil demand softens on that slower growth, a rise in electrification, and renewable sources, with the EIA forecasting lower prices over time. And for stocks in this theme, you can always look for companies that react negatively to the price of oil. For example, shares of American Airlines, ticker AAL, are down 2% as the price of oil rose 20% in the past three months. Of course, with jet fuel a major cost component, the airlines should do well as oil retreats. And for this, there's also the ProShares Ultra Short Crude Oil Fund, ticker SCO, which uses futures to take a short position on oil and does well when crude prices fall. But for this kind of situation, where the price of oil is likely to go down, but I want to protect myself from something pushing it much higher, I'm going to use a put back spread strategy. It's a fairly easy strategy to set up by selling one put, collecting that money to pay for buying two other puts. And I know that's about as clear as mud, but look at the payoff graph for what it means. The put back spread allows you to make money if a stock price falls, in fact unlimited profit potential, but to also limit your losses if the stock price rises. For our example, we'll use the United States Oil Fund, ticker USO. The fund uses options and futures to follow the price of crude oil, which you can see here in this three month chart, it tracks it very closely. It's up 24% from $65 a share this year alone. Putting that put back spread strategy to work, we're going to use the May 17th option, so a very short term investment here and we're selling the $85 strike put options, so collecting that $5.71 a share, while buying two of the $81 put options for $2.47 each. So collecting that $5.71 for selling the 85 options minus $2.47 and $2.47 means we end up collecting 70 cents, 77 cents a share for this investment, a net credit. You can play around with which options you buy and sell, but with this example, you make money even if the USO closes above $84.51, or if it falls below $77.77 a share. Of course, the idea here is that the price of oil comes back down, and you have that unlimited upside potential as the price sinks further before May expiration, but I love that you collect that initial $0.77 cents a share and could actually make money if something causes the price of oil to jump as well. The only downside here is that if oil does stay within that tight range between $78 to $84 on the USO fund, then the strategy does lose money, but play around with the options here and you can narrow that further. Get that special launch discount and save $150 off the Ultimate Options course, 29 option strategies you need to know, or click on the video to the right to see an option strategy I'm using to get shares of Nvidia for an 88% discount. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.